Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be trying to repair this job lock from eBay. Now I'm going to break this down into different parts because otherwise the videos will go on for too long. So let's open it up and I'll show you what's inside. That's an unusual package, it just looks like a big airbag. There we go. So we have a load of PlayStation 4 controllers. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and then the remains of this one here. Now I've never taken these apart before, so it's going to be quite interesting for me to see the inside of them. I mean I can see it there. So this must be the touch is this the touch screen here? No, what's uh Oh I don't know actually. No, this must be something with a touch screen. I don't know what that is there, but we're still going to find... Oh, it's a speaker, isn't it? Yeah, because these controllers do have, a, not a touch screen, sorry, a touch pad, but also they do have a little speaker as well, but not a lot of games utilise it, but it's still quite interesting when it does when it does work. Right, let me show you what I paid for it. So basically I got it from eBay, I paid £70, £65 and £5 postage, and I bought these back in, I think it was August 2018, so let me just show you what's written about them. It says, job lot of six DualShock 4 controllers, all for spares or repair. Faults range from faulty batteries, charging issues, no power, sticking buttons, and it just says what there, what there is. So it says, one fully working logic board but has no shell. Well, that's good if it is fully working because then I can use that as my spares to see what's wrong with the other ones, you know, to try to swap parts around and stuff like that. Because if this is anything like my Xbox one, it's got kind of two... Uh, two boards but how are these boards linked together oh look so this here goes on to this sort of pad here so does it just screw oh, that's not very good is it is it just a pressure fit then with with screws okay that sounds like it would be a bit iffy but either way then it kind of gives you a few options to kind of swap things around and see what's happening right so which one should i start on to begin with well i'll tell you what i'm going to do on this one here, I am going to actually test each of them individually and find out then what the faults are because none of these, you know, these haven't had charge since uh, last July or possibly a long time before that, depending on when the seller did the testing. So I'm going to see what's wrong with each of them because they're all going to be completely discharged and then uh, we can work out which ones to do in, uh, in each of the videos. Right, so I've just done a very quick test on each of them, just using the controller tester on the Windows 10 laptop here. And they look like they've got a range of issues going from power issues to analog stick issues. I haven't tested anything wirelessly yet. And also I haven't tested the batteries because I've been using USB. They all seem to be dead apart from this one here. When I hold down the PlayStation button, there does seem to be life in this one, but on all the others, they appear to be dead. So, maybe the batteries have gone but maybe they've been discharged for so long they might just all need a good charge up and then they might start to work again as far as that's concerned now i haven't tested anything wirelessly obviously when i do each video i will be testing it on the playstation 4 to make sure it's working fine but initially i think i'm going to start on this one here this looks like the analog stick doesn't want to go up and then when you start hitting the left trigger here it starts drifting upwards. So let me show you as well as that, it seems to be very iffy when I plug it in here. I don't know whether that's the lead, as far as I know this lead normally works okay, but you can see it's charging now. You can see it's glowing orange. Also this is the version two, because you can see just through the light bar here, and also it's got the gray buttons. The version one has got like black buttons and it's only got the light bar at the back. It hasn't got the little slot here. So you have to look at it there to see what color you are rather than just looking through the touchpad. Uh, yeah, so this basically will come and go with the charging. So now if I hold it up here, you can see it's gone out completely. So it could be a USB port problem. It could be that my lead here, I've been using on the Xbox One controllers, it could be that I've got flux in there, so I need to look into that. But if I'll, let me show you the app here, and then you can see what I'm gonna go to. So I'm gonna go to Control Panel. And I'm going to go to View Devices and Printers under Hardware and Sound. And now, can you see that out of all of them, this particular controller is lit up here. So I'm going to right click on it. 
and I'm going to go to Game Controller Settings, left click, and now I'm going to go to Properties. And now it will bring up this thing here. Now let me zoom right in and then I can show you each of the uh, button presses. Actually, can I make this bigger? No, I can't. Right. So what we can do here is each of these will light up when we're hitting the relevant buttons. So for example, there you go, see it's disconnected again now because every time I wobble this it goes off. Let me try to do this carefully now. Right, so if I hit this button here, you will see, for example, this lighting up as number one. That's number four, I think. Three, two. It might not be coming up on the camera here. There you go. You can see them lighting up there. Yeah. And uh, this one here is for the D-pad, so you can see it goes with the arrows when I move it around, and then you can do diagonals like that. So that appears to be okay. When it comes to the triggers, if you have a look at the X and Y rotation here, that's what moves there. It's disconnected again because of this lead. But there you go. Can you see it's going up there when I do the right trigger? And left trigger. So they appear to be working fine. And I've done all the other buttons and they all appear to be fine because they're all lighting up down here. Now the right analog stick's a bit weird. It does this, uh, these two here. So you can see it's moving the, it says... Uh, the Z axis and Z rotation. But again, that does appear to be behaving itself when I compare that to a working PlayStation 4 controller. But now, this is the one here. If you look at this box here, when I use the analog stick here, this is far from ideal. Right, let me, it, keeps, uh, it keeps going off, you see. That could be a problem with it as well. But look, can you see it goes down, left, right. But look, it doesn't go up at all. It's not going up and then if I hit the left trigger can you see it starts to go up so now look when I do the left trigger you see it's going up so there's obviously an issue there so I think what we'll do is let's take this apart and first of all we're going to give it a good good clean to see if we can find out why I mean maybe it's a loose USB port up here I need to find out why the charging is coming and going like that also, we need to find out what's wrong with the analog stick. Is the analog stick linked to here? Maybe the analog stick's working. Maybe it's some capacitor or something that's gone wrong, and that's what's causing this uh, trigger here to somehow be linked to this one. Really don't know. We're going to open it up, and we're going to find out what's happening. So let's get set up. Well, let's take this apart. Also, I had a look, and can you see it's very badly burnt down here. So maybe a repair's been attempted, and maybe the soldering iron was left across here by mistake. Not quite sure. Hopefully we'll find out when we open it up. Right, okay, so let's unplug this one here. So that is going to be for the, the light up here. Right, so that's relatively, relatively easy. Let's just have a quick look at this burn mark. Yeah, I don't think that burn mark's got anything to do with a dodgy motor or anything like that. I think it will happen from the outside. So we've got a battery here. So again, they look like they would be easy enough to replace. But that doesn't want to come out there. Let's undo this screw. Now remember, don't copy what you see in these videos because this is the first time I've ever taken apart one of these. So I might well be doing things incorrectly. Right, OK, so it was that cable there, that ribbon cable that was stopping it from coming away. Right, so that's that board there. Oh, I see. Well, OK. Yeah, it's quite, quite nicely made, actually, isn't it? So that is just a pressure fit there. I wonder whether that ever causes any problems, if dirt or anything got in there. And the speakers just go onto those two little contacts here, there and there. These two there. Well, okay, so the analog stick should be replaceable. 
I wonder, is it an analog stick problem or is it something else? Well, now it says Alps here. Do you know what? I bet you they're exactly the same. I think I might have read somewhere once that Xbox and PlayStation use the same analog sticks. And I do have some uh, proper OEM ones. So maybe I'll have to have a quick check on eBay just to see if they're the same, you know, if people are calling them the same thing. Maybe there's slight differences. I don't know. But maybe I might just to begin with just try swapping the analog stick over. Or. Or what I could do is possibly just change over the potentiometers here and see if that fixes it or not. That might be easier than unsoldering everything. Uh, yeah, that all looks relatively OK. All looks relatively clean. Quite a nice controller. So this must be for the little touch. Oh, lovely. Look at that. Well, it's all in a way it's quite modular. You can swap things over quite easy. So this is a little touch pad here. Yeah, I think I'm going to quite look forward to working on these. So first things, let's see what's happening with this analog stick. Also, why is this not popping out? I was just held in here with a clip. There you go. I just clipped in there and there. Right, so I know how to take that off in future. So I'm going to get my soldering iron out. I'm going to unsolder these wires here. Let's just see if they're marked up. Does it say plus and minus anywhere? No, it doesn't. It could be a coincidence, I don't know, but there is a little symbol here and that kind of points down to the red one and the symbol here is up by the red one here so it's easy enough to know which way to put them back. I think I'm going to start with that just in case it is as simple as an analog stick. Also the USB port, where is the USB port? Ah, so the USB port is part of this section here. So let's have a look at this. How does this come off, I wonder? Oh yeah, okay. That pops out there like so. So that's stuck down there, that pops out there, that can all be changed. So it'd be quite easy again if you wanted to change that over to a different colour or something. That's that bit there. So this is the USB port. Again, really easy to change over. So it's not like the Xbox one where you have to unsolder it and solder in a new one. With this one, it looks like it's all kind of modular. So they've just used sellotape to hold in the top. Not sellotape, like electrical tape to hold in the top here. Let me get some tweezers. I'll just use this actually. Right, so that's peeled back. Does that pop out? Yes, it does. So if you've got a problem with your USB port, how good is that? What a great idea. You just swap this over and then take out the ribbon cable. Job done. Right, so I need to actually find out what's happening, why it kept cutting out and, and stuff when the, uh, when the cable was in it. Maybe it just needs a clean. It might be just... Do you know what? I bet it's as simple as just dirt down there. Because it doesn't look... That doesn't look faulty, does it? I can give that a clean with IPA and then see how it comes out. Either that or does it get a little bit loose over time? Does that need to be sort of crushed down a little bit so it makes a better fit? Do you know what I mean? Maybe it just needs to be pressed down. Maybe it's the wiggling that's kind of caused it caused it to go a little bit a little bit loose. Well, I can check that out later anyway. But again, if I opened up another controller, I can swap stuff like this over, and then you get an idea of what's uh, what's wrong with it. Yeah, I'm quite happy with this. Well, I'm going to have a look in my Xbox box of spares because I definitely bought some OEM ones. And let's see if they're the same or not. Right, so I've got my soldering iron set to 400 degrees C. And what I'm going to be doing is 
I've got a problem, haven't I, on the left analogue stick on the vertical. And if you have a look, can you see this is the potentiometer for the vertical. So all I'm going to be doing is unsoldering these three ones here, and I'm going to swap it over. I mean, I haven't even tested this one because I can't, because I didn't have a USB plugged into it, but I'm just going to hope that it's working okay. I'm just going by the seller's description. I think it just said the logic board's okay. I don't know whether that means this is okay or not. But I'm going to unsolder these three here and I'm going to swap them over and see if it works. If it doesn't work then what I'll have to do is I'll have to uh, maybe take one off, uh, have a look at my Xbox, one of my Xbox boards where one of them's working and then take the potentiometer off that and see if it works because if I put a good known potentiometer on here and we've still got that problem with it not going up then we know really it's nothing to do with the analog stick it's something else but right now I have to do that because that's the most obvious thing that it could be so I'm going to be unsoldering it using the solder sucker and basically just swapping them over to swap them over they should just unclip from the top here so if I kind of just get something like that and prise it open you can see that it's start. There you go. You can see it's opening up now. Okay, I'm not going to do it anymore until I've unsolded the bottom. Right, okay, I'm really struggling here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off the soldering iron and I'm going to change the tip on it because I'm dealing with such a small tip here that it's not really transferring the heat into the board and I'm just wasting my time. Right, so I've changed the tip over now to a bigger one, so hopefully this will push more heat into the board. Right, what should have been a very easy, painless job was actually quite annoying so uh, hopefully now it will go a lot easier on this side here just out of curiosity I was just getting my meter on ohms and I was just testing the difference between the good one and the bad one now I'm not saying it's these carbon tracks it might well be the wipers here yeah but I'm just going to go on the outer two ones and from one to the other it's reading 9.3 kilo ohms that's on the good one and on this one it's reading less 9.2 but very little in it yeah I was just wondering if that indicates like wear on the track or not Probably not. Right, so let's pop this one back onto here now. So now let's put the good wiper in here. Let's keep the bad one over there, because as I say, it might not be faulty. It might be something else causing this. Well, okay, so that's back together now. You can see there that axis and that one there. So I think what we'll do is let's put it back together and actually see if that has made a difference or not. I was trying to put the USB port in the wrong one. The one up here is for the touch pad. Plug it in now and see what happens. Oh, there you go. So that's the light for the touch bar here on the USB port. Excellent. Right. It looks like that left analog stick has n is now working. If you have a look here, you can see now it's moving up. Well, I'm going to try see what happens now when I hit the left trigger. Yeah, it's not jumping up, is it? Oh, wow. I wonder, is it just going to be that?
yeah, it's not drifting up anymore, is it? And it seems to be seems to be sat in the middle. I'm not really used to this software, so I don't know how well, you know, how accurate and stuff it is. But it's definitely, uh, it's definitely doing something different now than it was doing before. So it looks like the fault was to do with this carbon track here, this potentiometer with this wiper in the middle. So I don't know whether it just needed a clean, possibly if I was to clean it, it might start working, but more than likely it's probably something to do with wear on the actual uh, carbon tracks there. In fact, it doesn't look too healthy, does it? So let's put this completely back together and then I'm gonna give it a good charge for maybe around 45 minutes or so, and then we'll plug it up to the PlayStation 4 and then see if it starts working. I'm slightly uh, skeptical because I've had such a nightmare with those Xbox One controllers that I'm sort of thinking, well, nobody would sell something so easy, you know, with a fault so easy on eBay, but maybe they have. You know, maybe they didn't have a soldering iron and a lot of these things are modular and if they couldn't swap something modular over, they might have, uh, you know, just sold it on as spares or repair, which would be fantastic. Uh, might not be the best for videos, might end up being a bit boring, but you know, sometimes it's nice to have an easy fix. As well as that, the other controllers might present a lot more other problems, or I might be jumping the gun here and maybe there's a lot more wrong with this. So uh, that's what I'm going to do, put it back together now and then we'll give it a good charge. Also, while I'm here now, I'm going to have a bit of a play around here and see if I, I can get this so it works more consistently. So I'm going to get some IPA and clean it. Try crushing it ever so slightly so it's a, a better fit. crushed it too much. So I just need to widen it out again. Right, okay, well it's certainly a snug fit now. It might be a little bit too tight, but I think when it's in the controller, I think it will uh, be okay. So let's connect it up now and see if it's still connecting and disconnecting. No, there you go, look at that. What a lovely easy fix. So, do you know what? This has actually been happening on my one for a while as well. My actual working one, so maybe it would be nice and easy to fix. Yeah, look at that, I'm giving it a good wiggle now. It's pulsing, but it's not going off. You know, it pulses when it charges. So I know it goes off every now and then, but that's just where it's pulsing on and off. Yeah, there you go, off, and now it will pulse back on again. Perfect, so now I know how to fix that fault. Really easy one, just uh, squeeze, if there's a slightly, the USB port, and then it will uh, make the pins connect better, because I suppose every time it wiggles, it just wiggles the male plug off the actual female connector in there. Nice, easy one. Actually forgot to solder in that potentiometer on the analog stick, so I better do that now. So that's it all soldered up there, and I've soldered back on the wires for the rumble motors as well. I'm going to give it a good clean up and then I'm going to charge it up. Now there's nothing I can do about this because I haven't actually got a spare case. I'm sure you can buy spare cases for them, but because it's an indentation, it doesn't really... Do you know what? I can't even feel it because you're not... You're, you do hold it there, but if it was sort of melted here, you'd feel it a lot more. 
So it doesn't look nice, but if it's still usable, then I don't really think it's going to be that off-putting. Let's get a couple of wet wipes and give this a good clean. Okay, I've given it a good clean now, and it's come up. It's come up really nice. Everything feels quite solid and good on it. Shame about that there, but there's not really much I can do about it. But apart from that, obvious way here. But uh, it was actually quite clean. Just the normal grime that you get in here, just through normal use. No matter how clean you keep your hands, you're always going to get some grime in here anyway. All right, let's charge it up and see how it performs on the PlayStation 4. Right, okay. So watch this now. You can see the orange light, and if I hit the PlayStation button, it will go to blue. And there you go, you can see it charging now. So I'm going to leave this for a good half an hour. Okay, it's been charging up for around two hours now, and it appears to be holding its charge on the screen. It does show a full battery level, and I can feel vibration working on this game here. Let me see if I can add it. There you go, hopefully you heard that. So it all appears to be okay. I mean, obviously I haven't done any long-term use on it yet, but it appears to be working like it should do, which is a right result. So what an easy fix to do. You can see there that it's moving up and down. Now, I wish there was an app to test it, but I've had a quick look online and I can't find an app on the PlayStation 4 that, uh, that you can do to test it, which is a bit annoying because that app that I use for the Xbox One is really useful because you can check the triggers and the analog sticks. Basically, it's all laid out in a real nice, easy way. But as far as I know, there's no equivalent on PlayStation 4, which is a bit of a shame. But it's... Uh yeah, you know, I suppose by playing it, you get to know, but when you're testing the controllers, it's kind of hard to get a game that will test every single thing on it. But I suppose the app that I was using earlier on the Windows 10 does show that all the buttons work and stuff like that. So that's all good. So what a nice, easy one to start. I don't know what the other four are going to be like, whether they will be just as easy or will some of them be more challenging. Hopefully it will still be a, a good series and uh, as far as the inside of the controller goes, real nice kind of modular design, really easy to change bits over. So I'm looking forward to doing the second one in this series. If you like this one, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care, bye now.